living my best life. I told y'all, I said, I'm living my best life. I made a couple L's with my best friends. Turned all my L's into lessons. You see the whip pulling up, it's like screws. Dreams pulling up, it's like screws. Just want to take a brief moment to shout out Reggie's Urban Jungle, one of my bros who sent me stickers when I ordered a couple of his awesome hoodie dresses. I will insert a picture in this video. Ladies, guys, he has probably one of the best urban reptile clothing lines out there right now. So shout out to Reggie and continue to be blessed and do big things. Good evening, reptile family, world, and heats. So today what we're doing is, or what I'm about to do, is prep the feeding for one of my reticulated pythons, which is T'Challa. Um, she's the only one who eats today. Everybody else eats, eats Sunday. Um, I try to keep her feeding spaced out based on her actual need to eat and not necessarily every seven days or uh, every 10 days. So she is currently on the extra large rat. Um, she's the biggest eater in my house, even bigger than my actual oldest snake, which is one of my ball pythons, my spider ball python. And so, I tend to not keep her on the every every seven day regimen, and not even with my boa constrictors. My boa constrictors, the babies eat every seven to ten days, but my larger ones, even though Chaco, who is technically just turning a year this this month, she's been eating medium rats for some time, and so I actually space her feedings out about every twenty. I'll say every. 14 to 21 days. It depends on her need to eat as well. So I don't typically stick to a certain schedule except for with the younger animals that are eating anything that is a small or less or the reticulated pythons who are eating larger or less. Um, those that, it, the one that's eaten um, the extra large is my biggest eater as I stated. And so therefore I do it based on her need. She ate actually nine days ago. And how do I determine whether or not she's hungry? One of the good things I do is I pay attention to her reaction when I'm feeding all the other snakes on their normal feeding day. If she shows signs of not just surfing around her enclosure but if she she has this look so let's my my reticulated pythons all have personality t'challa tells you what she wants when she wants it so she has this look and it's a different look of i smell food where she's just kind of sliding out and just you know looking opposed to are you feeding me is it my turn what's up are you feeding me is it my turn so when i start to see that reaction from her i know it's time for her to feed again. But if she hasn't had a bowel movement in between the last time she's eaten, I don't even feed her then. I wait until she has a good bowel movement and then determine, okay, now I'm gonna feed you. So basically what I do for all of my snakes, so those who pay attention, I am not a fan of live feedings um, to each his own. I particularly know that a snake can be badly injured and I spend thousands on my snakes and I'm not letting a dollar rat hurt them, harm them. Um, but it's very successful for many. I mean, I've been doing this for years and for my first, I'll say 20 years in the business, I fed live. And that was because I honestly, when I first started having snakes, I did not know that frozen dog was an option, to be totally honest. I learned that throughout the years and then I began to see its benefit and that's where I'm at with it today. Um, so some of my smaller animals, I had to actually feed like maybe when they were first 
born small hoppers, but you know, a hopper is not going to hurt them. And then I wean them off the hopper to a frozen thaw. As soon as I get an animal off a frozen thaw, they never see live again. So that's just my regimen and that's just my thought process on it. Um, I believe that whatever you do for your animal that makes your animal healthy and keeps them growing and keeps them from the vet, do that. Do that. Do what works for you. So all of my snakes seem to have a better feeding response when their food is heated up a little bit. So what I do is I actually just take a blow dry to it for a few seconds. 30 seconds or 60 seconds with the larger rat and put emphasis of the heat on the upper half of the rat. So T'Challa is eating. I know some of you would have liked to have seen the whole feeding. Um, I don't do that. I, I like for my snakes to eat in private. <laughs> as crazy as that may seem. I mean, I don't like people staring me in my face when I'm eating. I'm assuming they don't like it either. So, um, but I just wanted you to see how I prep for food and the patients that a reticulated python, although they have a strong feeding response, have when feeding. Um, you have to use the proper utensils, I do believe. Each one of my snake has their own individual feeding tongs and hooks. So I'll share a few different types that I use on different snakes. So you saw the one, the feeding tongs that I use for T'Challa. Right now, I only use that for her and Hefe, who is my Motley Mochino. Um, most of the other snakes, are fed with these tongs very comfortably. I still, even when I feed the boas, I put a glove on this hand when I'm feeding them to protect my hand because the boas can have a pretty strong feeding response and strike. This corn snake behind me, um, the corn snake <laughs> has a bigger feeding response than all of them. Literally, whenever I'm feeding, like even right now, he's pretty much on alert. Um, you will see behind, I don't know if y'all can see behind me, but behind me, I have one of my smaller boas, um, my um, Colombian boa behind me. He also just ate two days ago, but can smell that I just fed and he's very alert. So that's what I use for them. And next up is some of the hooks I use. So this hook right here, very hefty hook. And I use this for my smaller but still kind of heavy reptiles. And like, for example, I use this for my tiger pie, reticulated python. Because although he's on the smaller side, he is still very heavy. And so this part is still very sturdy. So I'll rub him with it, lift him in the first third of his body, and then lift him with my hand. Again, I use things that I've always, or techniques I've always used. 
I've been doing this for a long time and I have never been bitten by a snake. Has a snake struck? Yes, but I've always had myself in the right position, utilizing the right tools at the right times, doing the right things to keep me from getting bit. So, now these I use for, this one right here is the smaller one, and I use this for like the corn snake. Y'all heard me say it before, every snake I own, regardless of what species it is, it's hook trained. So the, the corn snake who has a very strong feeding response, before I pick him up, I just tap him with it, not even tap, touch him with it, and then pick him up. This one is for my medium-sized boas, which is two of the three. I um, only have one boa, my female boa, which is my um, jungle, my hypo jungle motley. She is actually on the thicker side, the bigger side. So I use the same hook that I'll show you that I use for the larger retail. So, but for the medium sides or smaller boas, I use this particular hook again. The boas are very simple. Go in, touch them, feed and response, come straight off, pick them up. And then this is the one that I use for the bigger snakes. So that's the reticulated pythons, the larger reticulated pythons. So all of them, the other two except for the pod, I use this one for them. The Motley Mochino normally doesn't even have a feeding response unless I'm entering on the side that I feed him on. Again, these snakes are way more intelligent than we think they are. Repetition, routine teaches them that this is how life is going to be and this is what she does when she's doing this for me. This is what she does when she wants me to do this. This is what I do when I want her to do this and this is what I'm gonna do when I don't want her to do this. It's very simple. Um, no one can convince me that these animals are not intelligent. I am a witness to some of the things that my animals do individually individually they have certain nuances about them so yeah yeah so give that to somebody else um i will go with what i know so i use this for the larger reticulated pythons and the berm the baby berm i really don't use anything for her um i think sometimes when i go in if anything if I think she's going to have a crazy response or she's not acting quite as calm as herself, I might just still stick this in with this in, but still pick her up. So it's, it's all based on the individual snake. Do what's best for you. I know there are plenty of people who can go into any enclosure, touch their animal and pick their animal up with not a problem. I respect that too. Um, I, I'm just not there yet. Um, and I choose... Just to be precautious. I mean, to be very cautious. So I don't create a bad experience for my reptile or myself. I mean, I love them. And like I said, it wouldn't hurt me to get bit. I don't think I've been bit by worse, but it will break my heart. So we don't want to do that. So that was it for tonight. Just a brief update on the tables. They're still asleep. So had I known that a brumation period for a table really, really could go this long, I don't know if I would have gotten them. And that's just only because I really like engaging with my animals every day. They are a big part of who I am. They are a big part of me. They make me smile on the inside. I love them as much as I love my grandchildren, um, my husband, my kids. Um, my animals are a big part of me. So... That's it for today. Have a good night and everybody enjoy. Bye-bye.